Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to see the relationship between the slope and the limit and how to properly write the limit in this particular context. Again, we're looking at a function f of x on the xy plane. We drew a tangent line which touches the graph of the function right here at point P and only at that point. That's the definition of a tangent line. And then we drew a secant line which also goes through point P and some other point of the function right there. Let's call it point Q. We can see that the slope of the secant line is close to the point of the slope of the tangent line, but not quite. And we know that the slope of the tangent line equals the slope of the function only at the one point where the tangent line touches the function here at point P. So if we, if we want to calculate the slope at point P, what we can do, we can say, okay, we're going to calculate the slope of the secant line and then say that it's close to the slope at point P. And if we want to get the two to match even more closely, what we can do is we can move point Q closer and closer, closer to point P, so, such that the slope of the secant line will which much more closely resemble the slope of the tangent and therefore the slope of the function at point P. So let's find an expression that defines the slope of the secant line. And again, the slope of the secant line, by definition, is equal to the ratio of the rise divided by the run when I go from one point P to the other point Q. So the rise can be defined by this distance right here. So this distance right here would be considered the rise and that would be equal to the change in the y values between the point Q and the point P. In other words, the, the difference in the y coordinate of those two points. So this can then be, then, then be defined by the change in y and the run would be this distance right here which is a change in x. Notice that the x coordinate of point P is simply x and the x coordinate of q is x plus some small change in x we call it delta x. Delta x would be considered fairly small. So the run would then be simply the change in the x values and the rise would be the change in the y values. Now, the y value for q can be found by taking the, the x coordinate x plus delta x and plugging it into the function f of x to get f of x plus delta x. So we could say then that the difference in the y values, the rise, would be equal to the function evaluated at x plus delta x minus the function evaluated at x, which is right here. So this would be equal to f of x plus delta x minus the function evaluated x, and we divide the whole thing by delta x. And that would then be the slope of the secant line. Not the tangent line, but the secant line. And we can say that it approximates the slope of the function at point P, but not exactly. You can see that it's somewhat different, that the slopes are not quite the same between the tangent line and the secant line. But if I want the slope to more closely resemble the slope of the tangent line, what I can do is I can simply bring the point Q in a little closer. You can see then that the slope of the secant line then would be closer to the slope of the tangent line and therefore closer to the slope of the function at point P. Again, if I don't think that's good enough, I can bring it in closer and I can bring it in closer and I can bring it in closer and closer and closer. So you can see that as you bring point Q in closer and closer and closer to the point P, then the slope of the secant line will much more closely resemble the slope of the tangent line and therefore much more closely the, the slope of the function at point P. So in the limit, and this is how we write it mathematically, in the limit, and when we bring, of course, the two points really close together, and that's what's called the limit symbol, and when we bring the two points really close together, then delta x becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So in the limit, when delta x virtually becomes zero, so in other words, when the delta x, the difference in the x values of the two points, p and q, approaches zero and we draw a little arrow like this this means that delta x approaches zero gets really 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 close to zero not quite there but almost there then you can say that the rise over the run which of course is the limit as delta x goes to zero of the function evaluated x plus delta x minus the function evaluated at x, all divided by the change delta x, that then equals the slope of the tangent line, of the oops, slope of the tangent line. And of course, the slope of the tangent line equals the slope of the function at point P. 
So all we need to do to find the slope at point P, which is on the function right here, is simply pick another point, Q, then bring Q closer and closer and closer and closer together, and as the Q becomes, becomes closer and closer to point P, then the slope of that secant line will then approximate the slope of the tangent line. And in the limit, and that's where the concept of the limit comes in, in the limit, as delta X approaches zero, in other words, as Q almost is right on top of P, then this, the ratio rise over run, the limit of that, as delta X goes to zero, will equal the slope of the tangent line, and therefore equals the slope of the function. And that's the concept of the limit as it points to derivatives. Of course, we have limits in all kinds of different situations. We'll touch upon those in the, in the videos to come. But the main concept in calculus is that the concept of the limit then helps us understand the concept of a derivative. And that's how we draw the connection.